What is the most unethical thing you did in a video game? Followed a guy home, broke into his house, stole all his possessions, and murdered his wife and his family because he insulted me in the streets. Can't have the Dovakin being disrespected. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Oh what am I thinking? Of course you don't. In Fallout 1 in one of the areas I'd be walking around with nothing but a ticking time bomb in my inventory waiting for one of the kids to pickpocket it from me in hopes for some caps. The first two Fallouts are almost cheating on this one. And trust me, my gigolo, P-Star, Slaver, Berserker, Child Killer character knows what cheating is. All the non-lethal routes in Dishonored are pretty bad. Cutting people's tongues out and sticking them in a slave mine that they in fact own. Handing a woman over to her stalker. Shipping a dude far away in a box. For some reason I really like the non-lethal routes. You can go on a rampage in a lot of games. But only a few games truly have good stealth mechanics. Years ago in Skyrim, I was attacked by a small group of mercenaries. The letter the leader carried said the hit was taken out by someone named Frogna. Naturally, I swore then and there that I would kill Frogna as soon as I found him. Problem was, I couldn't find him anywhere. His name wasn't on any house in Skyrim, which made him hard to track. Some 200 hours later, I stumble upon a child in Riverwood who insults me. I when I check his name, I discover that the person who put a hit out on me all that time ago was a child, and therefore invincible. If so, I settled for the next best option. I snuck into his house, waited for him and his family to return home, and slaughtered his parents right in front of him. I would later kill his dog. The story doesn't end there. However, once I got the Hearthfire DLC, I went to adopt a child for the palatial estate I'd built near Forkreath. And who do I see in the orphanage but Frodna? He's now the ward of the man who orphaned him in the first place. But later Frodna grew up, found a time traveling spell and went back in time to send mercenaries to stop his family's murderer. In Sims I made a basement, lured my least favorite neighbor into it, removed the staircase and hole in the floor all while my family was at work school. Just make a painting goblin in the basement like that one green text. In Skyrim, I brawled someone and gained their respect, and sacrificed them to both of you. After that mission when I came back to Whiterun a courier came up to me and gave me a letter with an inheritance inside of it. It was from the person and I felt real bad but 300 gold is 300 gold. I did the exact same thing. Any chance it was the mercenary from Whiterun. Married every available woman of wealth in all the best towns and promptly had a baby with them ASAP. Once they found out about each other I moved on to ladies of less financial stature and promptly got to knocking boots with them. By the end of my humpathon I managed to have hordes of angry women yelling at me for child support and my lil unruly bastard children running feral in the streets waiting at the gates each time I would return to a town. I dang near crashed the game every time I came back. Realizing that there was no way I could actually play the campaign at this point I raised the taxes so that they would have to leave. And that's how I was the worst king ever in Fable 3. In Detroit Beyond Human the robot from the main menu gained sentience while you play. She asked me if we were friends and I said no. She looked very sad the rest of the game and I felt really, really crappy about it. You should. Chloe is an angel so much that I was going to enslave her when she was going to ask for freedom. My colony in Rimworld was invaded by a pack of mad Labradors. The colonists killed all but one who was left injured. The remaining Labrador became tame and ended up joining the colony. I wanted to build a pet bed for him and scrolling through the fabric options I found Labrador skin. He slept on a bed made out of his family until he eventually died from a bear attack a few seasons later. I'm terrible. That is tame compared to some of the stuff you see on our Rimworld. Some of those guys are fricked up deliberately summoned a psionic horror that would consume all sentient life in the galaxy, just so I wouldn't technically be defeated by the other galactic empires. I want to play this game. My brother hijacked my Skyrim and killed Cicero while I was out, because he knew I wanted him as my follower. He made it so I couldn't load an old save and I was pee. The next time he went out I loaded his game, went straight to Breezer home. Went to the chest in the upstairs bedroom and ate all of his freaking Deidre hearts he was collecting for his Deidre arsenal and saved it. I'm still salty about him killing Cicero off though. Times like that you miss the poison apple from oblivion. 
have him eat that and save. Have to constantly cast heal spells or down heal potions or you are dead. That thing was pure evil. Crammed about 50 horses bulls donkeys into a small shack in Red Dead Redemption with some friends then chucked dynamite in the door. Never got to see how it all ended though because we crashed the server. Filled my basement in Skyrim with the green wine bottles. I Scrooge McDuck dived into it and fell through the floor. Fell for a long time. Dropping those baby penguins off the ledge in front of their mother in Super Mario 64 after I reunited them and the mother produced the star I need to complete the level. I then smugly sauntered over and claimed the star with my baby penguin blood covered hands. Absolutely brutal. Murdered a king so his 10 year old son inherited his kingdom. I then declared a brutal war to seize said kingdom, while also attempting to seduce the old king's widow, so the mother of the new king, while my army besieged his castle, forcing everyone inside to resort to cannibalism, I snuck in and fricked the widow, impregnating her, my army then stormed the castle, took the widow and boy king prisoner and took the kingdom for myself, I had the boy brutally executed, made the woman into my concubine, so basically a flesh slave. And when she gave birth 6 months later I had her and my bastard baby killed as well. The next few years were spent hunting down every remaining member of that family and having them all brutally murdered. Or imprisoned and castrated. All because someone from that family had insulted me 5 generations before. Go to love CK2. They said unethical things. This is just what everyone does against the carolings. Only. Probably. On another family. There's a story somewhere on Reddit about a playthrough of Stellaris, where the player went to war, conquered an alien species system, built not their whole empire, and then ended the war. A few race types are able to purge aliens from their planets, not by sending them away or systematically killing them, but by processing them into food. This player did that thing, but our madlord isn't done. Oh no, he has one more move to make. He opens up communications with this empire and offers them a deal they just can't refuse. Free food, hundreds of units of it, they gladly accept, despite the poor reputation our player has. And that's how you trick aliens into cannibalism. I remember when the option to process them into food was being announced. Some people got really upset about that update because it had options for immigration policy that included refugees welcome. I killed the entire institute over a cat they killed in a nursing home I was exploring. I went there, shot everyone, and left to go start the actual questline to blow the place up. I did not allow anyone to escape. Because of this, the railroad wanted to kill me, so I killed them off down to the very last one with a shotgun in their HQ. The brotherhood was mad because they didn't get to do it, so I killed everyone in their ship and then started the questline to blow up the pride one. I thought I was in the clear, until Preston was mad at me still for killing off all the institute. I installed a mod and killed everyone in the settlement. So basically you John wicked them. Ages ago, I was in Alterac Valley, wow, on my human rogue. While in stealth I witnessed a honorable one volt one between an orc and a human warrior. I did not help the human. They were going at it fully for a good two minutes, with skill, honor. Bravery and Valor and eventually the orc was victorious with only 2% left remaining. I then proceeded and backstabbed him, finishing him off. Another allied player nearby whispered me you freaking bastard. Being on my rogue, I took it as a compliment. I didn't do this but my brother had a guy assume he was female Iral and proceeded to flirt with him and give him in-game items. My brother strung this guy along to get stuff and make a ton of in-game progress. Oops. Met your brother probably saved a few actual girls from having to deal with this guy bugging them. Snuck into the home of an elderly couple looking for food, but was caught though not apprehended. The husband explained that everything in the fridge was all they had, including his wife's medicine. So I left out of pity. Several days later however, I was starved and needed resources. I went back to the elderly home and took only a majority of what was in the fridge, leaving the medicine. As I still had some semblance of ethics and morals, they did not stop me, but simply plead that I not do this to them. The next day, I visited the home once more, and the elderly couple were nowhere to be found. You gotta love hate this war of mine. I set an orphanage on fire in day 6, invisible war. Once I learned that the children were flammable I just had to 
Also a bunch of penguins. The children were flammable is a fantastic cutout. Okay in GTA V, you can play fetch with Chop, Franklin's dog. This a fun little minigame that makes him better trained or something. Now you could go to a park or something. But I thought it would be better to go by the side of the highway. I'll tell you right now. Watching that dog dart across 8 lanes of traffic while all of the cars are desperately swerving around him is a transcendently hysterical experience. But I didn't stop there. See, you don't have to play fetch with the baseball they give you. Turns out, you can go to the weapons wheel and use a grenade. In Harvest Moon, back to nature, there's a big festival where everyone adds one ingredient to a giant pot of stew. You climb a ladder, look over the lip of giant cauldron, and toss in your contribution. I happened to have my dog with me, I didn't think it'd work. It definitely did. It yelped when it went in, and the whole town ate a heaping helpful of my dog stew. They didn't even like it. When I came back to the square after the festival, the sprite for my dog was hovering in midair, completely motionless. I tried exiting off screen and coming back, and he was gone. But if I whistled, he still barked. This happened in 5th grade, and I still feel like a dong about it well into adulthood. Rest easy, sweet pup. Known that you tasted serviceable at best. In Civ V, I tried to trade with Morocco for their wine but he tried to rip me off and wouldn't take a fair deal. I nuked all his cities and annexed them. I got my wine. This, my friends, is an example of a dangerous alcoholic. When I play The Sims, if I can't find a good looking adult in the town for my sim to date, I will wait for a child to grow up so they can date my adult sim. Kinda creepy that I'm basically preying on children. In City Skylines, I built a huge dang full of sewage right on THR side of the city. As soon as my city hit 50k, I released the dam full of sewage. Teamed up with two strangers in the black zone in the division. When the extraction helicopter arrived there were only two free slots to extract the loot. One of them let me have his one and said I'll just wait for the next one. I secured my loot then shot them both in the back and used the other slot to also secure the loot stolen for them. Welcome to the division, guys. This is why I lurk in the shadows and stalk everything I see. There wouldn't even be a temporary alliance with you. You don't frick around in the dark zone. Too bad the loot sucks now. No real reason to go there. After getting a message from many civilization and spore that mentioned spode. Spore god. My policy is to melt all their planets with the heat ray. Realistically, how many people would a few dozen interstellar empires have? Second most unethical thing would be in Europa Universalis 4. When colonizing Australia. Getting annoyed at natives rising up and attacking my colonies and proceeding to kill every single native in Australia so I didn't have to deal with them anymore. I mean with the Australia one. It's kind of sticking to history so there's that. I guess with GTA, too many to remember the worst, but the one I really felt the most was killing the first little sister in Bioshock. I restarted the game and played it clean after. Couldn't accept continuing the game with even one dead sister. P. Yeah, that game was a little too good at the making me care about the little sisters. I could never bring myself to kill any of them or let them come to harm. At the time I wasn't very good in English, so I only knew the basics of the story and did what the quest told me to do, and then I killed Parthernax. I regret it till this day. You monster. In Red Dead Redemption I would go to thieves den and hog tie people and bring them into my house and torture them. I loved it so much I would even talk to them lol. I also like to run my carriage into couples kissing. The NPCs were great in that game. I love the whole lasso and hog tie mechanic in that game. One of my favorite things to do was rope the last guy in a fight and then just drag him behind my horse for a few miles. Also, the mustache twirling achievement for hog tying someone and leaving them on the train tracks. I installed mods in Skyrim that allowed animals and monsters to force themselves physically on NPC characters at will. I also installed other mods, and, mods, things were done. It was bad. Hey it was Laverse Lab and I got the bestiality mod addon. And some dungeon ones. Just google Skyrim Lovers Lab forum. Yes officer. This comment right here. The Moloch Bal quest in Oblivion is pretty vile. Other Dark Diedrich quests in Oblivion. 
Mephila's quest involves starting a blood feud between two families that were once friends. For she Argareth, rain flaming dogs from the sky to convince a bunch of KGI that the world is ending. A hilarious prank, unless you're one of those dogs, plummeting from the sky while on fire. Ugh. I actually still cringe at teenage me doing this and have regrets to this day. I was really into my play story at the time and my friends and I devised this plan called the drop game. My super high level friend would tell people that he would let them into his guild. But first they would have to pass a test so he could know if they were trustworthy. He would have them follow him to a part of the map where there was a visual obstruction. Like a pipe or something. I would crouch and hide behind the pipe so no one could see me on screen. He would then proceed to drop some really high level gear and wait for 5 seconds before picking it up. He would tell the person that the point was to see if they wouldn't grab the gear and be honorable while he dropped it. Then he would have the unsuspecting person who wanted to join the guild do the same. He would wait far away and have them positioned super close to where I was. As they dropped the items I would get up from my crouch and pick up the items and then we would go and sell the items. I'm sorry I was such a dong. I accidentally hit the wrong choice button and let a guy go even though he'd been physically torturing prostitutes colon I fully intended to kill the frick out of him. But I was too lazy to open the most recent autosave. Yeah it's from the Witcher 3 lol but it's from the quest line where your spoiler obs, chasing a serial killer and he leads you to some eternal flame guy torturing a prostitute. I accidentally hit the axii option and had him leave the brothel. But since it wears off I'm betting he went back to torturing prostitutes eventually. I did kill Horson Jr though. No way I was gonna let that guy live. This sounds like The Witcher 3. I got scammed in a game by someone offering an in-game service for cash. In anger I used the same method to scam someone. It was $40 and I instantly felt so bad I returned the money to them. Apologized and logged off for the night. Never fight fire with fire. I mean... You can fight fire with fire. Just don't spread the fire to other people. GTA 4 my favorite thing to do was spam the boat spawn cheat. It would drop a boat from about 10 feet up every time you did it. It also didn't count as you committing a crime so I would walk around crushing everything in my path with a boat. Just smashing people and cars down over and over again. Also, only driving on sidewalks is pretty fun and cruel. In F04. Literally no raider would survive a run in with me. Even once I got the pacify command. Frick a raider. MGS5 I sniped so many soldiers they all started wearing super heavy body armor and helmets so it wouldn't work anymore. In reality, I'm completely non-violent and don't even kill bugs. Nothing tops the truck punchline. When I heard that the plot for Fable 3 would revolve around the children of Fable 2's hero fighting for the throne I started a new Fable 2 game and had as many children with as many different women I could. Was playing as Jerusalem in CK2. Had three sons and the third was a genius so once my character read a book and got depressed I imprisoned then executed the first two sons then immediately killed myself in order to avoid being hated by everyone. Playing as the third son I married a strong woman and eventually had several great kids, including a strong genius daughter so I converted the family to Zoroastrianism and married her to my best son in order to keep the good genetics in the family. But he turned out to be gay and so in order to get good children grandchildren, they'd be both. I seduced her myself. Unfortunately the firstborn child was inbred so since it wasn't officially mine, can't assassinate your own children. I plotted to have it assassinated and it was suffocated by a maid age 1 years old. But before I could get busy with my daughter-in-law daughter to get better as the plague swept through and killed most of my family, including my character, ended up playing as the daughter I was trying to seduce since my original heir, her husband brother, died as well. Deciding to make the best of a bad situation, I got to married to the sixth son of the Byzantine Emperor. Had a kid with him and sequentially kidnapped and castrated the first 5 children and their sons so my son ended up becoming heir. 15 years down the line I plot the assassination of his father and then grandfather and, now twice a widow, I marry my son just before the emperor is assassinated and am now the empress, Basilica, of Byzantium for the next few years before he has me assassinated by blowing up manure under the floorboards. I become him and spend the next 50 years brutally putting down revolts and fending off crusades due to being a Zoroastrian emperor of Byzantium and Jerusalem before I convert to Judaism and die in my sleep as Basilius Robert the Cruel. 
Builder of the Third Temple. In Crusader Kings 2, I was playing the Byzantine Emperor. I had a rebellion against me, as one does, and I managed to capture the rebellion leader's wife and children and mother after a successful siege of his castle, and so I killed them. I killed all of them. When the rebellion ended with victory for the proper government, resulting in the rebellion leader being imprisoned in my dungeon, I had him castrated, which the Byzantine Emperor can do in a CK2, and released back to his duchy, to rule for the rest of his life knowing that his kids were dead and his line would end with him, and it was all his fault. Oh, and as a bonus, my emperor who I was playing as had the kind tray, nothing kinder than murdering a man's entire family and preventing him from having any more. I killed them all, not just the men, but the women and children too. Emperor Ephehazip III. It wasn't me but I was playing sims on my brother's computer and while I was in the bathroom he locked one of my sims out of the house. She had gone 3 days without food or water or a bath and was about to die when I finally figured out what he did. Soul trap Nazim. Kill him. Put his soul into a wooden sword. Give it to his not grieving widow. Actually, that might be the most ethical thing I've ever done in a game. The best thing to do with Nazim's soul is put it into a pair of boots and start walking around in the cloud district. There's this MMO I used to play with my brother, he would hang out in popular spots, find people who seem like friends, and then create a character with a similar name to someone to try to get their friends to lend him money and items. He got filthy rich. Truly unethical. I built a particularly shaped house in the sims so that the parents, who never learned how to cook, immediately burned to death being trapped in an outdoor room full of hedges and plants. Their child, safe and trapped in another room, didn't know this was happened. Immediately after the parents died, I went into build mode and added a door more walls. The kid enters. He is sad. The grim reaper shows up and does his thing in front of the kid. I delete the door. The kid and the grim reaper are roommates until the kid grows into an old man and dies. Also, in Roller Coaster Tycoon, I set up those boundaries so people could enter but never exit the park. Made it awesome so got lots of people to enter at first. Then, I trapped them all in a small area with only two rides. Two of the the loop de loop one that went one direction and back down. Set them to face one another. Set the launch speeds too high. They were timed to go off simultaneously. Each coaster's cars would launch past the end of the track into the air and crash into each other, exploding. The population slowly dwindled. They weren't happy. My park rating went way down. My WoW character probably has a 6 figure kill count. I've decimated so many villages in exchange for small amounts of gold. I am basically a prolific war criminal. Successful murder hobo. In The Witcher 3 there's a quest in which you must trick this demon inside a Yarl which involves the decision whether to throw the Yarl's baby in a fiery oven or not. I remember how horrified I was when I chose the option at the last second thinking did I really just do that turns out it was all a ploy and is either a doll or the baby gets taken out the other side hidden away I can't remember but those few seconds of thinking I actually just threw a live baby in a molten hot oven burning it alive didn't make me feel the greatest. I go on killing sprees in GTA V sometimes. I wish they would make a game with the level of detail and quality and have a realistic police system. Crash into a car and leave the scene. Witnesses will tell the police and perhaps it will come back to you. Especially if you're in your character's official car. Basically I want witnesses and evidence to matter. Have your face be more recognizable the bigger your crimes before you are killed or arrested. And they can save how the cops currently are for when you go on sprees. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.